All right. Uh, hi, I'm Zero Counts. We're going to be running some Star Tropics for Nest Block. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a really great game. It's a tropical adventure on the NES. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Let's get ready here in three, two, one, and start. All right. All right, so this is Star Tropics on the NES. Uh, we are playing as Mike Jones. He is an ace pitcher who is going to Sea Island to visit his uncle. Um, and uh, you'll notice something, as soon as we get onto the island, we go and we talk to the chief. Uh, we have to talk to a couple other people on here um, in order to uh, gain access to the dungeon later. Uh, it, it works on a kind of a flag system. But we go and talk to the chief, and the chief uh, informs us that our Uncle Steve has been kidnapped. He's been abducted by what we don't know yet. But there's really only one thing that people really get abducted by. But I won't spoil it for everybody. And then we get uh, what I think Star Tropics is known best for, is uh, the weapon that we get to use, which is the yo-yo. Uh, one of the coolest weapons in all of NES gaming. So we have a few more people to talk to here before we enter the first uh, dungeon in the first chapter of the game. A lot of these characters make little jokes about us being from America and they ask us if we're from Americola. When they made this game, they added a, a lot of references to, uh, to America. So this was made by uh, a Japanese dev team, but it was only released in the US uh, and also in Europe. Um, they never got this officially in, uh, in Japan. Um, so it's really fun sometimes to like see uh, like uh, Japanese streamers uh, playing this for the first time because um, this is like yeah, completely uh, new to them. Uh, so I'll kind of explain how this uh, game works a little bit and the techniques we're going to be using. Um, you'll notice it looks a lot like Legend of Zelda. Um, but uh, it does not control like Zelda, I'll tell you that much. Um, everything is on this like grid system and Mike is like locked to that grid system. So uh, you can't like change directions until you've snapped into place on that grid tile. Um, you can also, there's only certain blocks that you can like jump on, which are like these. Uh, you can jump across one space, anything larger and you, uh, you'll jump into the water. Um, and then everything is, uh, is also like buffered. So a lot of the inputs in here are buffered movements. So um, as long as you throw the next input during the animation of the first one, um, uh, it'll, uh, the, that second input will happen on the very first frame uh, following the animation of the first. Um, so basically what that allows us to do is like take all of the rooms and sort of come up with like uh, puzzles on how to like finish the room the theoretically like the fastest way possible. Um, sometimes enemy RNG gets in the way but some of these rooms are kind of scripted so that helps. So like this one we hold the uh, attack button as we come in there and that allows us to hit that first bat. Um, this is the first boss of the game. This is Sea Serpent. He's gonna attack us and we're just gonna jump and walk right through. <laughs> And he's dead, yeah, look at that. There's the skeletons back here and everything. Yeah, shout outs to Sea Serpent. Uh, sea Serpent uh, never gets their dues. Um, sea Serpent does come back in a refight in uh, the sequel, Zoda's Revenge. Um, but we also skip Sea Serpent in that run too, so. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate. It's actually a cool, f yeah, never gets any love. It's, uh, it, it's unfortunate because the, the boss fight's kind of cool. It's one of the only boss fights where um, the music actually cuts out and then like has like this death animation and yeah, it's pretty awesome, but no, we don't get to see it. Uh, so this is our, uh, our Uncle Steve's um, assistant. His name is Babu. Um, Babu's acting really weird. He's like, your uncle's not here and we don't know where he is, and, but he doesn't want to like tell us any more information. So we're like, all right, cool dude and he gives us a gives us a code that we can uh, use to access the submarine here uh, and that's the end of chapter one so we're taking our submarine to go and find our uncle um, you'll notice uh, there's a little uh, helper that we have on the submarine um, 
It looks a lot like uh, Rob the Robot, uh, but that's NAVCOM. NAVCOM will uh, help uh, steer the ship and um, also uh, help us uh, find our uncle later on in one of the later chapters. Um, really, he just adds time to the run when he has to talk to you. <laughs> okay, so this is chapter two. Uh, we got talked to by uh, a mother dolphin who is looking for uh, looking for her son. Um, her son uh, has been uh, kidnapped by the boss of uh, this chapter, Octo the Huge. Um, he's, <laughs> yeah, it's a really great name. Uh, he's named that because he's an octopus and he's indeed huge. Uh, and uh, so we're like, oh yeah, we'll help you out. We'll go and find your uh, find your son. Uh, and so we have to, uh, in order to um, gain access to a special ability that the submarine has, we need to get a code uh, that allows us to um, dive into the water. And that lady that we talked to told us that there was a, a message in a bottle on the uh, on the beach. And so we go and we pick it up, and lo and behold, it's a message from our uncle that uh, tells us the code that we need uh, to dive into the water. It's really convenient that we managed to find that in the whole vast ocean. And here we are, second dungeon. This is chapter two. Um, we're gonna have more uh, interesting enemies here. We got these uh, mud skippers. They take two hits to kill. Uh, you'll notice, um, there's gonna be some weird movement where I just sort of like twist in the mid in midair for no reason. Um, there is a, a reason behind that most of the time. Um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, set up leg frames so that um, I can jump on these blocks um, when they're not uh, when they're not sinking. Um, you'll also know so right here I'll jump up in between tiles and that causes some lag. So I can jump on that as soon as it uh, appears. And then everything here is all buffered movement, all these jumps. Buffer off this, and then that will be there. Yeah, there we go. That's a perfect room. It's gonna be the same number of frames every single time. We got a lot of uh, health drops, that's crazy. You never come in this room with five hearts. And it looks like I need it too, because I took an extra hit there. All right. So now we got a, a, one of our first uh, sub weapons here um, in this chapter. It's the baseball bat. Um, really cool weapon. We only use it for attacking right here, and then we never use it again. Um, we will use it later for um, for buffered uh, buffered setup, um, but uh, never for attacking. There are ways you can use it to save some time, but um, you really have to get really good RNG for those situations to present themselves. All right, I only have to kill one of those bats in there. Um, it's a big thing with this game, when you're playing it casually, you'll, you'll go into an area that has like a whole bunch of enemies and it's really overwhelming, but a lot of times the game is only looking for you to kill one of them instead of the whole lot. Uh, we just picked up a, a magic item, which is called the, uh, the snowman. The snowman does it, uh, freezes everything on the screen. Uh, for a number of seconds, and we're going to use that on the boss. Uh, here's Octo the Huge. Octo the Huge takes 50 hits from the yo-yo to, to kill. Um, we are going to buffer all of our attacks when it's frozen. Alright, there we go. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's important to note there that um, it, that we are doing buffered hits there and not mashing. If you mash the, the attack button there, um, you will uh, not get the number of, or the right hits in. Uh, mashing is actually slower than buffering in this game. Um, so I think it's, I can't remember the exact uh, time, I think it's 360 beats per minute. So if you like get a, a metronome out and uh, put in 360 beats per minute, that's, uh, that's the optimal mashing for Octo the Huge. Um, oh, sorry, buffering. No mashing. There's no mashing in Star Tropics. Um, so uh, the the buffered attacks also um, differ um, for like the timing for the buffering uh, differs depending on how like far away the enemies are from you. Um, so if the enemy is uh, further away, uh, your yo-yo has more distance to travel. 
Um, and so, like, if an enemy is walking towards you, like we'll see in chapter three with these mummy enemies, um, you sort of have to kind of ease into the buffering, and, and uh, there's going to be longer spaces earlier, and um, you just get, they got to get the timing right. <clears throat> All right, so that is chapter two. We saved the uh, uh, we saved the dolphin child, brought back to um, his mother, and now our submarine. Uh, went through a really bad storm and crashed onto the uh, crashed onto the uh, the beach side here, and uh, thankfully we're still alive uh, and we're cheerful. We're just gonna have to walk. That's fine. Totally fine. Nothing nothing to worry about. Um, so the only place that we can um, visit to to move forward is this cave here. Um, there are so in chapter three. There's actually five. Uh, five different uh, dungeons. Um, and this is the first one. Um, this one is, uh, some people like to call this RNG cave, because uh, the enemies here are like just riddled with bad RNG. These dodo enemies will just sort of go wherever they want um, unless they see you. If they see you, they will uh, attack. They will uh, start running towards you. And these enemies here are the flying monkeys, and they're terrible. Uh, they just jump wherever the heck they want. Uh, they take two hits to kill, uh, and there's a whole lot of them. Um, here's the second room with them. They're everywhere. They do whatever they want. You can sort of tell where they're going to jump because they will look that way. Um, there we go. That was actually a really good room. Uh, we'll never see the flying monkeys again. Thank God. <laughs> uh, we're going to use these uh, bolas uh, to buffer so we can jump on these at the right time. Um, they travel across the whole screen, so they're really nice for killing these enemies. Um, these are uh, ostriches with human skulls, uh, also known as nightmare fuel. Uh, they're pretty scary. We will see those uh, occasionally throughout the game. All right, that's the end of that dungeon. It's a really quick little romp, but a lot of really scary enemies. Oh, I should note that at the end of every one of these uh, chap or end, every, uh, end of every one of these dungeons, it does uh, award the uh, the player with a screen that says, "Wow, you've done it." So when we get to the end of a dungeon, if you want to uh, participate and and say, "Wow, you've done it," uh, feel free. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> it's always a great achievement when you get to the end of a dungeon. Uh, this is Miracola. Uh, it is the largest city. City, I don't know, town, I don't know what you call this. This is this uh, organization of huts. I have no idea, um, but it's it's the largest town in the in the game. Um, we have to talk to a lot of people here as well. Uh, this is Miss Mira. Uh, Miss Mira asks us if she's uh, if she's cute. You have to tell her yes, otherwise you cannot proceed. Um, uh, but uh, we're actually lying to her. Uh, Cor coral on uh, on coral cola is, is much cuter than Mira, but we would never let Mira know because otherwise we couldn't finish the speed run. All right, so now we talk to all those people, we get access to the chief's hut, and this chief uh, tells us that um, he tells us that his daughter is uh, under a spell uh, and has been sleeping for a really long time, um, and he agrees that uh, or he agrees to a deal that. Um, if we save his daughter uh, and go and get a, uh, a magic spell that will wake her up from the hermit on the other side of the island, um, he will fix our submarine for us. I don't know how he does that, but he does. He can fix our submarine. So no questions asked. Asked, We will do that. We will save his daughter. Um, but we don't really believe him at first, so we go up and check to make sure that Beninette is indeed sleeping. And then we can leave the town. Um, the next dungeon uh, has like a whole bunch of um, different sub weapons in it, which are pretty cool. Um, I, think it's, I think it's one of the dungeons that has the most sub weapons in the game. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if we could skip Miracola, that'd be really great. That's, there's so many NPCs you have to talk to. It's unreal. Um, we're just going to walk through these guys. It's fastest to just damage boost. 
Okay, that, that room's a little scary. Uh, you have to um, sort of uh, um, entice those enemies to run towards you. Um, this is one of the coolest uh, rooms in the game. Um, you're supposed to use those snakes to sort of know which um, path you can jump over to, depending on how far they come to attack you. All right, so we just picked up two um, sub-weapons. Uh, the bat we talked about, we're not going to really use that much. Uh, we are going to use it for a, a buffer here, um, so we can jump across these tiles. Then we can grab this, and because we buffered, we won't fall in the water there. Uh, and then we also have the slingshot. So the slingshot uh, does two damage. The yo-yo does uh, one damage, um, the slingshot does two. Uh, it travels a little bit farther than our yo-yo does, so this will be our primary weapon until we get to the boss. Um, here we're going to do, when we jump on that, uh, that button, we're doing what's called a legless button press. Um, a lot of times when you jump on buttons in this game, uh, it will cause a little bit of lag if you're like holding another direction while you're jumping on the button. So what you do is you let go of all inputs um, until you press the button. Oops. This is mad muddy. He always gets in the way. Um, yeah, so you let go of all inputs when you jump onto the button, and after the button has been pressed, then you can uh, put in your jump and the direction you're pressed, uh, you want to go, um, and then that will uh, eliminate the lag that would happen if you're jumping off the button. So it saves you a couple frames. Okay, so this is Magma, Magma the Fierce here. You use the bat for buffering. Uh, we have to find two switches that we have to press to drop magma into the water while dodging all this stuff. Hopefully we'll only take this one hit. All right, we're good. Uh, there is a faster way to do that, um, do that fight, but you have to take uh, two hits. Uh, we didn't have enough health to, to really do that. Um, there we go. Uh, I like to say that uh, magma is the island's um, uh, local water heater, because people always wonder why, like, why is why is magma of this fire demon, like, sitting above a pool of water? That's probably why. But uh, now that we defeated magma, all of the people of uh, oh yeah, thank you, thank you, yes. <laughs> uh, now that we've defeated magma, um, all of the people of Miracola have to have cold showers from now on, which is a little unfortunate for them. Nothing worse than a cold shower. Okay, so uh, we just passed this, um, this castle. Uh, that's the castle of Shikola. If we go there and we talk to the fortune teller, uh, the fortune teller will tell us that their crystal ball um, was lost uh, and dropped into the lake by the uh, graveyard. Um, so we have to go to the graveyard and find the crystal ball. We have to drain the lake uh, and retrieve it. Um, the graveyard is probably, when, when people play this casually, this is one of the biggest uh, choke points where a lot of people just give up um, because uh, it's really, really rude. Uh, and I'll kind of talk about why as we get to places. Um, the, these enemies, these little bone dogs that they're, uh, they're called, are just like the dodos except they move a little bit faster. Um, we're going to jump forward immediately when we get into this room. Uh, if we didn't do that, we would get hit by uh, an invisible ghost in that first, uh, that top row. Um, believe me, they are there. Uh, we will see them later. Uh, these are mummies. They're really slow, uh, but they take a lot of hits. Okay. Uh, this room here is also going to have a lot of mummies in it, but we're going to do some weird buffered movement so that we don't get hit by any of them. did that right. Yes, okay, we're good. There's four invisible ghosts in that room that are moving back and forth, um, so it's really easy to take damage. Uh, so you can see the ghosts <coughs> if you use an item called the Rod of Sight. Uh, we don't pick one up, though, because it takes time. Um, we do. We will be required to destroy some of those ghosts later on. <coughs> Whoa, okay. So this room here, <laughs> this room here is one of the reasons why a lot of people hate this dungeon. Um, this dungeon is filled with false exits that will spit you back out uh, to the overworld and make you restart the dungeon every time you, you exit uh, those false exits. Um, that one right next to that uh, 
that little like slug. Uh, if I would have moved one tile up uh, and hit that uh, staircase, um, I would have um, exited the dungeon. So this dungeon, or this room here, uh, is a dark room uh, that you're supposed to use a lantern to get through. Um, but if you buffer your movements just right, uh, you don't need it. All right. This is Mr. Armstrong. That was Mr. Armstrong. <laughs> uh, so the, the boss music plays here, but it's not the real boss. Like I said, this, this dungeon is like super trolly. Um, tries to make you think that you're fighting a boss when you're not. It makes you take false exits that make you think that the dungeon's over, but it isn't. Um, yeah, it's, it's really scary. The graveyard motif is perfect. All right, so here we're gonna use that rod of sight, and there are those ghosts, just like I was saying. We do have to defeat these two to get through this door. Uh, there's two more in here that we'll take care of. You'll notice that I kind of moved left and then right there. Uh, the reason for that is uh, I'm doing a lag cancel again. Um, uh, if you uh, if you if you ever like attack one direction, then quickly try to move um, the opposite direction right afterwards. Um, the game will uh, use a few uh, a few frames of lag to. Um, correct like <clears throat> like what uh, movement frame Mike is on um, so the best way to deal with that is to um, if you're ever attacking something up and then uh, left or right is to uh, quickly move backwards oh god we only have to defeat uh, four of these six mummies and we try to like set it up so that we don't have to uh, um, have them all get in our way I took one hit but that's okay we'll be all right this room's kind of scary. We got these um, Wizrobe style enemies here. Uh, we have to use this magic mirror to reflect their shots. If we don't have the magic mirror, um, we can't defeat those enemies and we would have to take a death and find the magic mirror. All right, this room is totally empty. Whoa, there's a big boss in here. This is Maxi. Maxi is the boss of the graveyard. Sometimes Maxi will stop and go, ooh, and that's when you want to really like throw bolas at them. And that's Maxi. That was actually a really good Maxi fight. Bye, Maxi. Yeah, see you later, Maxi. Uh, another little like micro time save. This game is like filled with little tiny micro time saves. Um, when you're exiting a room, when you know a door is going to like explode like after a boss, um, you don't want to be holding, uh, you don't want to be like holding left as the door as you're waiting for the door to open because right after the door explodes um, there will be um, uh, Mike will sort of once after or right after the door explodes Mike will start like walking for a few frames and then exit the door so you want to wait until the door explodes and then walk through um, uh, in order to uh, get out optimally wow you've done it yes I did <laughs> and uh, we just drained the lake and there is the crystal ball <clears throat> So now we have the crystal ball. Orb, yes, it is an orb. <laughs> it's your orbs in chat. All right, now that we have the crystal ball, we can go back and talk to uh, uh, the fortune teller, um, who we've never actually talked to. This game is filled with flags where you have to talk to certain NPCs before you can like continue. Um, but this is the only one that you aren't really required to talk to uh, ahead of time, which is nice. That saves time. Um, so we are going to head back, talk to the fortune teller, and the fortune teller is going to give us a reward for uh, retrieving the crystal ball. Um, what they're going to uh, help us do is um, uh, gain access to the Castle Shikola. Uh, the Castle Shikola is um, inhabited only by uh, female uh, warriors. Uh, and so in order to get in, um, uh, the fortune teller uh, gives us a disguise that we can use to enter the Castle Shikola. So now we are Michelle, and we are going to go and talk to uh, the Queen of Shikola, um, who is going to uh, commend us for defeating uh, the monsters in uh, the graveyard. Uh, and uh, as a reward, she is going to give us 
uh, our first weapon upgrade, um, which is the Shooting Star. The Shooting Star is a um, kind of like a mace, like a Morning Star style weapon. Uh, it also has a projectile on it, uh, so it travels a lot farther than our yo-yo does. Uh, and it also does twice as much damage as our yo-yo, so it does uh, two damage per hit instead of one. <coughs> uh, we have to talk to that head warrior before we leave. Um, that head warrior will uh, or gives us um, the password to make it uh, across uh, the water to the other side of the island. Um, they tell us that we have to say abracadabra after hitting the switch ten times, and then a bridge will appear that allows us to travel across the water. So we will go to the next dungeon here. This is the um, third dungeon, right? Fourth dungeon. I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Abracadabra. And look at that. There's the bridge. You can jump into the water there. I don't recommend it. All right, we don't want to lose the shooting star in here. It's very important that we do not lose the shooting star in this dungeon. <coughs> Thankfully, the dungeon is very short, but we have a lot of enemies that we have to deal with on the next screen that we're going to sort of manipulate their movement. So hopefully they don't bother us. These octots are being a little sus. All right, we got them. Uh, the next dungeon is um, really tough to do without the shooting star, and it takes a lot longer. Wow, you've done it. Thank you. Uh, so we need to make sure we have that shooting star in this next dungeon. Um, it can be like, like if you go through this dungeon with yo-yo rather than shooting star, it can be add like 20 seconds to the run. It's awful. Okay, so this is the last dungeon in Chapter 3 been quite the trek, but we are almost there. Hey, we got a skull heart. You always get skull hearts when you don't need them. Believe me, if I had five hearts right now, that, that skull would not drop a heart for us. And I believe the skulls actually drop hearts. Oh, look at that. Two of them. Wow. <laughs> I was going to say, the skulls actually drop hearts more often than, uh, than other enemies. Um, but yeah. We never get them when we want them. All right, so now we're heading into the basement here. We're gonna get some scary music because uh, we got some scary enemies coming up here. We got the uh, the Frappas. Uh, I called that because they are Kappas that jump out of the lava, fire Kappas. Um, hopefully they don't jump in our way. No, actually that was, that was pretty good spawns. It's all RNG, so you never know what's gonna happen there. We have to defeat this Mad Muddy to get through here. That gadfly is gonna get our, in our way, and it dropped a heart too. Wow, uh, I hate this game sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's your uh, Yorick. Poor Yorick. <laughs> All right, there are two Frappas in this room that we have to kill. Uh, if we hold down and right here, we can kind of spawn them a little faster. Right, these are goblins. We have to defeat one of the goblins in here. There we go. That was really close. <laughs> All right, now we are out of the scary area. Now we come into this next room where we have a mad muddy to deal with. Kind of buffer our movement and hopefully, yeah, we're good. All right, this big guy is called a bully. He does a lot of damage if he hits you. We're going to kind of manipulate his movement here. There we go. Sneak right past him. This is another goblin and also the last goblin that we're going to see. And it dropped a heart because of course it did. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, if I had taken any damage, this would there would never there would never be this many hearts here. <laughs> All right, we have one more bully to deal with. We're going to kind of slide past it. Oh, oh no. Okay. What you want to do is you want to slide between those tiles. And then it sort of like keeps walking past you. Uh, thankfully, we got all of our hits in. If I would have had the yo-yo, I would have definitely been stepped on. All right, that's the end of um, of that dungeon, uh, and also the end of chapter three. So.
So the uh, geyser shoots us up to the top of the mountain. Wow, you've done it. Look at that. Uh, and now we can talk to the hermit who lives at the top of the mountain. Uh, and the hermit gives us a uh, spell that we can use to wake up Beninette. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Just feasts on uh, frappas and bullies, hunts them. <laughs> uh, run, run, hurry, hurry. We have to get back to Miracola. We don't have to walk there. Uh, so now we say the magic words, uh, be ba 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 uma uma a bob, be ba ba uma uma a bob, to wake up uh, Beninette. Hey, and there she is. And she's like really hungry and wants to eat a banana cream pie or something like that. Um, but they fixed our submarine and now we're good to go. There's Navcom, wasting our time. <laughs> All right, and we are uh, done with chapter three, moving on to chapter four, everybody's favorite chapter. And I will tell you, this is, uh, if you have to use the restroom or uh, need to get a snack or something, this is the time to do it. Uh, chapter four, uh, called Confession, uh, is also known as the, the whale chapter. Um, there's, there are no dungeons in chapter four, um, just a giant whale. Uh, and uh, if you look at the shape of this island, it's sort of hinting at what's going to happen next. Uh, we have to talk to this kid here, who talks about uh, how he saw somebody sailing in the water um, from Sea Island. Um, but he's not out here anymore. So we take the submarine and we go, oh, let's go look for that guy. Let's see wh where he ended up. Oh, now we're swallowed by a whale. Nobody could have possibly seen this coming. Who knew? Who knew? So much like Pinocchio and Geppetto, we are now stuck inside of the, uh, stuck inside the belly of Monstro here. Uh, and lo and behold, Babu is also in the belly of this beast. Um, we talked to Babu, and Babu tells us that, uh, that he had a lighter on him. Um, and if we had it, we could build a fire, and then we could cause the uh, we could cause the whale to sneeze. Um, but with all the smoke that we make, uh, so we have to go and find the lighter. Uh, the lighter is always in the same spot. So this is all just buffered inputs as we make our way to where the lighter ended up. Do do do. It's good that they gave us some good music to listen to while we're here. All right. Uh, so uh, this is an important part to talk about uh, when it comes to Star Tropics. Uh, Star Tropics um, is famous for um, having some anti-piracy uh, measures put into it. Um, at this point in the game, um, when you get the lighter and you uh, uh, get shot out of the whale, uh, spoiler alert, we do get out of the whale. Uh, the rest of the game is not inside the whale. <laughs> uh, once you get out of the whale, um, you, uh, Babu will uh, uh, tell us that our uncle um, had a tracking system put into the, uh, uh, put into the submarine um, in order to find him. Um, but in order to activate it, we need a special code. And that special code is on a letter that he wrote us. Um, but we haven't been given a, a letter in this game. Uh, and that's because the letter that he's referring to is actually a letter that was attached to the back of the manual uh, when you had the game. <clears throat> and what you do is you actually take that physical manual from the, or physical letter from the back of the manual uh, and you can dip it in water and a special message will appear uh, telling you what the code is. Uh, and the code is 747 megahertz. Um, so Babu is telling us about that and then we will go into the ship and we will type in 747 and then we are on our way. If you don't have the, if you don't have the letter um, and you don't know what that code is, uh, you could be stuck there for hours, um, trying out random numbers, trying to guess it. I've had people come into my chat before who say that they have never, uh, that they never got past chapter four as a kid because they didn't have the manual. Um, 
All right. So this is chapter five. Chapter five is uh, one of the longer uh, chapters in the um, in the run, uh, mainly because there's a lot of overworld. Um, what we're uh, trying to do is we're trying to um, when we get to ch uh, to this island, it's actually blocked by uh, there's a the ship that's blocking the strait. Um, so we have to uh, sink the ship in order to uh, gain access to, to travel through the strait. Um, so to do that, we need to get a, a worm, a fresh worm from a fisherman who's here on the island. Uh, and then we have to give that to, um, to a parrot who will give us a code that we can use to gain access to the dungeon. All right, so uh, unfortunately we have to like travel like way out of the way um, before we go into the uh, go into the town, um, and then once we're in the town, we have to talk to a bunch of NPCs. Um, this is the last town in the game, so thankfully we wanted to do this anymore after this. <laughs> hey, we got good uh, villager RNG. Sometimes those villagers will walk the opposite direction, or they'll walk like away from us, and yeah. But they both walk towards us because they know we're in a hurry. Uh, we have to talk to everybody here except for like one person. They don't really tell us anything of importance. Um, but it, it's sort of the the reason why we have to talk to these NPCs is like it's supposed to be a way of like uh, simulating that uh, you know the before the the village chief can trust us, we have to like get to know the people of the island and stuff like that. Um, we have to be a good a good guest, you know. Uh, so what this chief is telling us is that uh, is that the strait is blocked, and uh, the only way we can get past it is by sinking the ship. Um, and the only way that uh, the only person who would know uh, anything about uh, accessing uh, a device that could sink the ship is uh, uh, the owner of the ship, Captain Bell, his parrot here, um, his pa uh, parrot Peter. Um, uh, uh, will we'll give us a, a clue on how to sink the ship if we give them a, uh, a worm. Uh, we go and talk to Peter and Peter says, no gift, no chat, no gift, no chat. So you give them a, uh, uh, them a gift of the worm and they give you a code that is uh, do me so far do me. Uh, and what we're supposed to uh, translate that to is uh, notes on a piano. Uh, do me so fa do me. Uh, so if we go to Captain Bell's memorial here on the island, uh, there will be a, a, a giant organ, um, and then we have to play those notes on the uh, on the organ keys, and then we will gain access to the uh, to the dungeon. So here we are. We don't want to input this incorrectly, because if we do, we have to exit the the room and then come back in before it lets us uh, try again. There we go. Now we're going to come to uh, one of my favorite rooms in the whole game. Uh, this is the F room. So we get some F's. Oh, we always ask for F's in chat for the F room. F. <laughs> All right, and now we can access the dungeon. Chapter 5's dungeon uh, is sort of like Indiana Jones inspired, I always like to think. Um, there's a lot of traps here. Uh, it's less about uh, en uh, enemies and more about just like random traps. So the boss music already plays when we get in here. And the boss music here basically means that there's something scary going to happen. So now all the tiles are, are blowing up behind us. We have to press the switch, but first we're going to grab some health. So we have our shooting star. And then we jump out of here. Then we got spears coming out of the walls. Whoa! We got to dodge those. Jump over this one. Uh, these, uh, these little enemies here are called pinballs. They kind of bounce back and forth. But we can just buffer our jumps and be totally fine. All right, then everything's fine. The music has gone back to normal. Whoa, and we fall into a hole, and oh no, there's, there's like pencils coming out of the ground. 
Oh, everything's fine again. It's totally okay. All right, we'll go through this hidden passage through the wall. Just have to defeat that bat. Don't have to worry about those snakes. And we go through this door here. And uh, we have more tiles being destroyed underneath our feet. And we have a giant bowling ball. Oh, I tried to do a, something called the blue bowling ball skip there. Um, basically, I could get ahead of the ball um, but, uh, and save a, a few seconds, but fortunately, the buffered movement didn't work out, so we're just going to have to do it the other way. All right, we're good to go. Just have to defeat that snake. Don't have to worry about those ghost pirates. So we're grabbing a rod of sight here, so we know that there's going to be some invisible ghosts coming up later. This is a kind of cool room. We're going to uh, manipulate the uh, snake to come charge at us, so we can sort of walk uh, out of the room while the snake is charging, and then turn around and attack it. Uh, those are the last dodos in the game. We don't see any more dodos, so Mike is responsible for the extinction of the dodo. Rip dodos. All right, we did uh, some buffered movement there using the magic mirror, uh, so we can leave uh, that room uh, almost frame perfectly. A lot of bats that we don't care about. And here's where that invisible ghost is that we have to defeat. Yeah, imagine playing this casually for the first time and like trying to figure out where the heck everything is. And turns out you're, you're using that rod of sight in every single room trying to find where the dang ghost is. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> Alright, we got some more pencils coming out of the ground. We're going to buffer a yo-yo hit here so we can jump and not fall into the water there. Alright, and then we have the last bowling ball, the red bowling ball here. You can attack the bowling balls and stop them in place for a little while. So we do that for this one because this one actually like homes in on on Mike. I didn't like my timing there, so I threw an extra hit at it. Okay, and this is the last room here to defeat these ghost pirates. Oops. All right, and now we can go and hit the switch, uh, which will raise the gate, and it will. Um, sink the ship. One, two, three. There we go. That's the end of that dungeon. So I'd like to ask everybody to uh, salute as the, uh, the ship goes down. Wow, you've done it. <laughs> yeah, we sure have. We sank a irreplaceable, hundreds of years old ship. I think it was an antique. But that's the end of chapter five. Now we're on to my favorite chapter. This is chapter six. It has some of the coolest dungeons and enemies in the whole, whole game. Uh, but before that, you know what time is it is. It's overworld time. All right, so uh, the game sort of spoils it a little bit, but chapter six is where we uh, um, is where we find our uncle. They named uh, name this chapter Reunion because we will be reunited with our uncle at the end of this chapter. Um, and uh, we know that our uncle is here somewhere in this archipelago. Um, but we don't know exactly where. Uh, so we have to sort of navigate our way um, to the top uh, right of the screen um, by using these little 
um, dive spots. Um, yeah, there's a there's a, a specific way that you have to go through these um, in order to access that area. Um, you can spend a lot of time here casually trying to like figure out which way to go. That get, the game helps a little bit, you know, like that little arrow there tells you we gotta go right. Um, but then uh, the last spot is right here, and this will take us up to the top right section uh, where Navcom is going to uh, talk to us and tell us that he has um, he's come across the uh, coordinates of our uncle. Uh, and so now we have to find our way to that spot. Um, the way that we go uh, is to avoid Navcom talking to us anymore, except for right there. And then we go down and here we are. Now this part right here, I'm going to do this dungeon blindfolded. I'm going to turn around, do this entirely blindfolded. There it is. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's very impressive. <laughs> All right, so now for the real dungeon. We call that one 6-0. This is 6-1. 6-1 uh, introduces us to a new item called the anklet. Uh, the anklet allows us to jump over two tiles at once. Uh, so we're going to grab some hearts here and some hearts here, and now we have the shooting star. We do not want to lose the shooting star. Very important that we do not lose the shooting star. Okay. So this next trick is one of my favorite tricks in the whole game. Um, we are going to uh, set up uh, a frame here by taking a hit from that octot. Um, and I'll explain a little bit after it happens. All right, so the octot on the top right is just far enough away from us that we can't reach it normally uh, with our shot. We can only reach it every other uh, every other frame because that uh, just based on like the animations of the octot and like how far away our shots uh, are coming from. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, we took a death. That's okay. Now we can do my favorite trick again, <laughs> uh, and that gives me some time to uh, to talk about it again. <laughs> So the game is uh, checking for damage every other frame, um, and because that octot is so far away, um, uh, we have to set up the damage frame. Um, and what we need to do to do that is take a hit and then make it so that our buffered movements um, equal up to an even number of frames. And then that guarantees that when we throw our shot, um, it'll be on the proper frame uh, to hit that octot. Um, if you don't set it up this way, uh, it's a coin flip every time you throw the attack. Yeah, see that time I didn't set it up properly, so now you'll see that, yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's just slow. There, see, that's why I took a death, so that you can see both ways to do it. See the difference between them. <laughs> yeah, this room right here is really scary. There's lots of, uh, lots of mummies in here. They take a lot of hits to kill. Sometimes they drop items and then that eats up one of your shots, which is no good. <clears throat> Alright, we're coming across the uh, first boss of Chapter 6. Here we go. This is Turboss. Turboss is just kind of a reskin of Octo the Huge. Except we don't have a... Um, we don't have a... Uh, a snowman for a turboss. So we sort of have to uh, attack him without it. Okay. We do have to remember that we have a potion, so if we end up needing it, we can use that. I think I've gotten more heart drops on this run than any other run of this game. It's absolutely insane. Okay, this room is a sort of a puzzle. There's three entrances into the room and you have to enter them in a certain order so that you can destroy the, the door and then turn on the lights. And then also destroy these uh, chests so that you can walk through them. Uh, we just picked up a weapon called the horse hides or the baseballs. 
And now we also picked up a weapon called the cleats. Uh, the cleats attack every single enemy on the screen, so they're really helpful. Uh, the baseballs uh, don't do any damage to anybody except for the boss of this dungeon. So we don't want to touch those until we get to the boss. That's unfortunate. Okay. There's a way you can kind of buffer uh, all of your attacks in this area um, to get out of here as fast as possible, but we got hit by a fireball, so. There we go. <clears throat> all right, we got a lot of mummies in this room. This room is just kind of stupid. <laughs> hey, look at all these tiles you have to jump across. We're gonna make it as difficult as possible to defeat all these uh, mummies. So we use the cleats, because that's the fastest way to do that. Use the cleats to take care of that last snake. All right, and this is Broken Joe. Gotta wait for Broken Joe to come out of the wall here. Now we gotta throw baseballs into his mouth like a carnival game. Come on, Joe. Well, we got a one-cycle Joe, but he had to, like, dance around for a little first. But that was good. That was fast. All right. That is the first dungeon of Chapter 6. We have one more to go. Uh, this wow, next... you've done it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this next dungeon is my favorite. Um, it, uh, it's just constant execution. Every room has, there's a whole bunch of different enemies and you use uh, one of my favorite uh, sub weapons called the asterisk, uh, which is a weapon that you, uh, it's a projectile weapon that you can throw and then split into two directions um, by pressing the attack button a second time. Um, but first a little bit of lore, there's this uh, giant uh, rock that's got three uh, cube shaped holes in it. Uh, but Mike can't read the uh, the inscriptions on it, so we just leave it there. <laughs> uh, so this room, uh, this dungeon actually has a secret uh, entrance over here. Um, if you go up, uh, you just it just takes you to like a never-ending loop. So you don't want to go up that way. We got some swords coming out of the ground. Shoutouts to the uh, space invader in the water there. All right. Oop. If you hit that sea urchin there, it starts shooting back and forth. So you want to take care of uh, some of the snakes first before you hit it. I'm going to pause a little bit here and then throw an asterisk. This room is really scary because uh, those fuzzballs work just like they do in Zelda. If they hit you, um, you can't uh, attack things for like five seconds. They don't do any damage to you though, so it's, that's not as big of a problem, but every time you uh, take a hit, if you haven't defeated all the enemies in the room, that's just time ticking off the clock. All right, so we're coming up to the first of three bosses in this dungeon. This is uh, uh, a hoodoo doll or a clay doll. We take care of him really easily. It's 14 hits to defeat uh, the clay doll. Uh, the, that one is just sort of like a sneak peek of like the true boss, which comes later where we have to actually fight two of them. These are Rockies. You can only attack them when they appear on the side of the room. All right, there we go. Oh, that's right. This room first. Oh, look at that. One one Rocky took the hit for the other one. All right, we got one more in this room to deal with. There we go. Yeah, we got some hearts in here, but we don't need them. We're good. Let's just skip right through. These guys take a whole lot of hits, and when you get into this next room, it's like super scary because there's four of them, and there's like a fuzz balls around, and yeah, you don't have to deal with that. You just go, go through the wall, and you're fine. <clears throat> okay, we got a potion we can pick up here before the next boss. Now I'm going to focus here a little bit. All right, we're good. 
you get really close. And so, I mean, the, the closer enemies are to you in this game, the faster you can attack. So if you can get right up close to those guys, um, it's beneficial. Save some time. All right, this is the last boss of the dungeon. That was the last boss of the dungeon. <laughs> Those are the twin sumochos. Um, when you use the asterisks, they're really, really easy to deal with. Uh, if you run out of asterisks, um, thank you. <laughs> I have to remember to stop talking when I'm at the end of the dungeons. <laughs> uh, so when you, uh, if, if you don't have the asterisks during that fight, um, most people, uh, when they're playing casually, think that, well, that's it. I, I can't do anything anymore. Um, but you can actually jump um, onto little platforms that are right in front of the Samocho's heads. Uh, and then you can just like wail on them with your yo-yo if you need to. All right. So uh, I mentioned earlier that at the end of Chapter 6, we will meet our, uh, our uncle. We are reunited with our uncle. And here he is. I like the way that they introduce him. They say, oh, this guy looks a lot like your dad. Oh, it's my uncle. Yeah, that's, that's how that works. Uh, <laughs> so your uncle, um, this is where the game like takes a complete right turn. It's just really, really weird. Like uh, he explains that he was uh, abducted by aliens and the aliens took him on his ship, uh, or on their ship and uh, he managed to escape and the aliens have these like magic cubes that they're using to power their spaceship. Um, and uh, yeah, they have like plans to like, I don't know, destroy the world, I have no idea. And he's like, hey, Mike, I can't go do that. Why don't you go and save the world and go on the spaceship? And you're like, okay. And the next chapter is on a spaceship, <laughs> <laughs> alien spaceship. So, there, so, <laughs> so our tropical adventure um, is finally, uh, um, is finally uh, uh, going into the stars Star, tropics, star, tropics, there it is. That's how, that's how it all pieces together. Um, so this is 7-1, uh, is the first dungeon of uh, chapter seven. We call this uh, area the bottleneck uh, because this is where a lot of runs die. Um, if I take a death here, it's totally reasonable because so many, so many runs die here. Uh, we're gonna try to take as little damage as possible before the boss. Yeah, that guy's gonna get a shot in because he does something that he's not supposed to do. That guy's gonna be weird, that guy's gonna be weird. Oh my goodness, all right, we're just gonna get, go through, go, go, go. All right, we're, oh, all right, we're, okay, we're good. We want Shooting Star here because we need it to, oh no. It's all right, it's all right, we got this. Oh, okay. All right, let's see what happens. We only have one and a half hearts to deal with the boss. We'll see what how this goes. Try my best. <laughs> Ooh, that's not good. All right. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that is scary. Yeah. So you you really want to have uh, the shooting star um, when you're going across that. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> uh, you really want the shooting star because if you don't have the shooting star, you have to use the yo-yo to attack those bikers that are uh, charging at you. And if you have the yo-yo, they take two hits a piece. Um, and the timing on that is just not good and if two of them attack you at the same time uh, you're dead you can't you can't defeat them so um, but thankfully we got through we're a little low on health but it's fine <laughs> there's a lot of health that we can pick up in the next dungeon all right so uh, we get the first of three magic cubes uh, and it awards us with an up or our final upgrade to our weapon uh, we now have the supernova um, Something I didn't uh, talk about before is you do need a certain number of hearts in order to use those uh, weapon upgrades. So I believe for this one we need 11 hearts to use the supernova. Um, we need six hearts to use the uh, shooting star. Uh, the supernova can uh, um, travel across the entire screen. 
uh, and it does three damage per, at uh, per attack instead of um, two like the shooting star. So it's really, really nice to have. What are you doing? That guy never goes up there. <laughs> That's Jeff. Uh, Jeff always gets in the way and shoots us. Um, he didn't shoot me that time, but he did some weird stuff. It's very Jeff of him. Oh, all right. All right, so we got some turrets in here that we're gonna try to get all in one go here. Nope, that last one down there did not line up for us. The execution was right, the RNG was not. All right, we have an item coming up here called the uh, Vitamin X. Vitamin X will give us maximum health that will uh, even past our, our absolute max. Um, and then it's gonna sort of like slowly tick down as we go here. Whoa, that alien's chasing me. <laughs> I'm jump through there, because we got lots of health. Oh. I want to get like on the corner of these enemies. And then jump and attack, there we go. All right, we got a boss coming up here that we're gonna use with this new weapon called the shield gun on. There we go. Make quick work of him. All right, now we are on, on our trek to the, uh, I actually didn't need those hearts. Um, now I do. <laughs> we're on our trek to the uh, final boss of chapter seven. I'm gonna wait here because I think I messed up the timing on that. Okay, I'm gonna focus here. There's some buffering I need to do. All right, there we go. <laughs> I'll explain that after this fight here. Oh. All right, I messed up the quick kill on that, but Thankfully we got to the button uh, with plenty of life to spare. Uh, so that buffering technique that I used to get over those heat tiles, um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm setting up the, the frame count so that I can walk over the first heat tile as it's transitioning. Um, so I, I pass, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I pass over the heat tile on the same tile that it's, uh, or at the same frame that it's transitioning. So we basically just like swap places. Uh, and then we have to attack with either the uh, the ray gun or the shield gun, uh, which has the proper number of frames um, to let us walk over the next one without taking any damage. So it's really, really handy, because if you take a hit from those, um, it does like, I think, five and a half hearts worth of damage. It's really, really bad. Um, you can do it the casual way and then like jump between the tie or between the like levels and, but, uh, this is a speed run, it, that, take, that takes too much time. <clears throat> All right, so these are the uh, overly long maze-like hallways. Um, if you've seen speed runs of this before, um, you may hear people sing that along with it. Overly long maze-like hallways. Overly long maze-like hallways. We just have to find our way to, to the uh, second cube here. And there it is. Cube. <laughs> so the second magic cube gives us um, full hearts. So now we have uh, 22 hearts. Um, but uh, we're not going to have them for very long because at the end, at the, at the beginning of every single chapter, uh, it starts you with uh, three hearts, no matter what your maximum uh, health is. So uh, say goodbye to all those hearts we just got. Um, and also. The aliens have uh, got, must have gotten wind that we're um, <coughs> totally wrecking their ship, so they uh, blasted off into the into the uh, into the sky here. So now we're up in space, and we have to go and fight to uh, find their their leader, um, Zoda. So Zoda is the the final big bad of this game, uh, and he's going to present himself here shortly. 
This is also where one of the most famous lines from Star Tropics comes from. And you see the alien is alien Zoda is trying to uh, is trying to uh, take over our mind um, by talking with us and hypnotizing us. Uh, but to uh, combat that, we shove bananas in our ears. <clears throat> okay, so this fight here, I'm going to hold down here, and it did not work, which is okay. So the reason why we hold down during this fight is because um, we need a, a head to appear here and not hands. Um, you have to attack the head four times. Um, you can only attack it once per, ti per uh, time it shows up. Um, if you hold down uh, while you're waiting for the head to appear, uh, it actually increases the uh, chance of a head to uh, appear from like 40 something percent all the way up to like nearly 75 percent. So it really, really helps to hold down there. Uh, before we discovered that, um, uh, it would not be uncommon to have like 12 hands appear. And every hand costs like two and a half, three seconds. It really adds up fast. <clears throat> Um, now that we have that manipulation, it's gone down to like, really no more than like five hands. If you get any more than five hands during that fight, the game just hates you. <laughs> um, so that's the first boss of chapter eight. We are going to the second boss, uh, which is the ship's reactor. Um, the ship's reactor uh, takes a lot of hits and it also regenerates its health. Um, so we have to kind of manage enemies uh, while we're attacking the ship's reactor here. And we can also fall into these pits, which would be bad because that would uh, send us down uh, to the, near the beginning of this stage again. There we go. All right, and now that the ship's reactor is destroyed, the ship is in shambles and we are gonna go uh, defeat Prime Invader Zoda, final boss of the uh, of the game. So time is going to be on uh, the death animation of Zoda, and I'll sort of explain why after the run. All right, Zoda, what are you doing over there? Zoda showing off for the marathon. There we go, that's time. So that is, <laughs> that is the, uh, the glitch credits. The reason why we do time on Zoda is because um, if Zoda spits out two of those little like spaghetti monster Zoda spawns, um, then the game will play out normally. And then we can play the rest of the game. We can grab the third magic cube. We go back to Sea Island, everybody celebrates. Um, but if Zoda doesn't spit out any of those uh, little spawns, um, it automatically just warps to the credits. And because we don't really have control over whether or not Zoda spits out the spawns or not, we have to time on the death of Zoda. So um, unfortunately, we don't get the cool ending and the music and everything, but you still get to see the cool pictures. That one's my favorite, by the way. It's very cool. Um, but yeah, that's Star Tropics. Um, thanks for letting me run this for uh, Nest Block. Um, this is, yeah, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.